All right, so if everybody's in, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, for our meeting on October 19th, 2020. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, I'll uh, remind uh, Council of Declaration of Pecuniary Interest if it arises. And I'll ask everyone to turn their cell phones off so it doesn't disturb the meeting if able to, um, or put them on vibrate. And the guests, if you could keep your video on mute until um, your part of the meeting comes up, that would be great. So I'll, uh, we have the minutes here from the October 5th, 2020 meeting. Um, if everything's in order there, I'll look for a, a motion to receive those minutes. And if you can hold your hand up there, I see Councillor Webb and Deputy Mayor Drew. All in favor? And that's carried. So we have quite a few on the screen today, so it does make small square. So if you're trying to get my attention, hold your hand in front of your face and uh, I'll try and catch you. Bear with me here. So um, anyways, so our first uh, order of business is the uh, Committee of Adjustment. So I'll look for a motion to turn over the meeting to uh, Deputy Mayor Duro to take on that part of the meeting. Somebody want to move? So move, Mr. Mayor. Okay, moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, Deputy Mayor Duro, go ahead. Mr. Mayor, good morning, Council. Um, we'll now call this Committee of Adjustment meeting to order and remind the members of the committee their requirement under uh, to disclose any pecuniary interest if it and so it should the occasion should arise. This public meeting is held under section 45 of the Planning Act and its regulations. Uh, we have one minor variance this morning, minor variance application A0920. And I will now ask our planner, Ms. Stone, if she would present the application. Good morning, everybody. Um, this application is for the property owners, Ian and Anna Jamison. The agent is Ken Trevelin. Municipal address is 6 Cachabog Lake Island 4. Roll number is 15310100009 Lot 8, Concession 7. The area is 0.48 hectares. The zoning is island residential. The official plan designation is shoreline residential, and it is in Methune Ward. The purpose is to seek relief from section 4.36 to permit a covered attached deck along the front of a cottage of a seasonal residential property, having the following effects to permit a covered deck at 3.3 meters from the high water mark. Uh, the recommendation is that minor variance application A-09-20 for a covered attached deck at 3.3 meters from the high water mark be approved with the following conditions, that the development be done in accordance with the site plan submitted that any requisite approvals be received by applicable approval authorities prior to the building permit being issued, that a building permit be issued within 12 months of the approval, and that the balance of the information in my report is received. So this application is to allow for a permanent pergola over an established attached deck to a cottage on an island property. This application meets the four tests of the minor variance as it is considered minor, appropriate, and in keeping with the official plan and zoning bylaw, as well as the provincial uh, policy statement and the growth plan. It is my recommendation that this application be approved. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. Um, is the applicant present today? Yes, I am. Thank you very much for that. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition to this application this morning? I'll allow a couple of minutes since we're on Zoom to get anybody in if they're so required. And I'll ask it again. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition of this application? Is there anyone uh, present wishing to speak in favor of the application? Ken, if you'd like to say anything on this. Yes, I, I would. Uh, I think it's a fairly simple application. The the uh, the deck has been there for a, quite a long time, and the it was shaded by trees. Uh, the trees were all taken down in a storm a few years ago, uh, so they wanted to replace some shade on the deck. That's their their goal. Uh, so that's the reason for the application. All right. Thank you for that. Are there any questions or comments from the members of the committee of adjustment? Councillor Pomeroy. 
You're on mute. Yes, Deputy Mayor Durow, this is to Laura. I've noticed the last, well, the last few times here, we don't have any pictures like we used to have of, of these uh, minor variances. And I think they're very beneficial to us. I know in the past uh, we had our own committees that we went out and looked at them um, and we did take pictures but if you're doing it and, you, and we don't have a committee anymore, I just wish that we had some pictures that we could, you know, you could share with council so we, we can see what we're, what we're actually doing, what we're approving. Do you sure, agree so, with yes, so through you, Mr. Chair, um, it was brought to my attention that council would appreciate some pictures. This one's an island property um, and the notice went out at late September. So I did not attend site, but going forward, there will be pictures um, attached to the applications for you. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for those comments. Anyone else? Committee of Adjustment have anything to add to that? Through you, Deputy Mayor Giro, um, as stated here, this is quite simple, straightforward application. I would move that we approve the uh, application through the recommendations of our planner. Thank you, Council Rose. Mayor Martin? Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you. We have a mover. Who else? Mayor Martin second the motion. Is there any more discussion on the motion? I'll call the motion. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. That motion is approved. So I will thank Laura once more and I will turn the gavel back over to a motion to turn the gavel back over to the mayor. Councillor Webb, Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The gavel is yours. All right. All right. Thank you. That was quick. Um, all right then, so uh, we'll move right into delegations of presentations. And uh, our first delegation is Plan Mac Engineering with regards to uh, County Road 48, better known uh, to a lot of local people as far as Ontario Street, Quebec Street, George Street, and Mary Street. Um, this is with regards to redoing the, uh, the road and uh, this is the drainage part of it. So um, I'll turn it over to uh, Brad Callis. I um, hope I pronounced that right, but uh, go ahead, Brad. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Martin and members of council. Yeah, uh, my name is Brad Kalis. I'm with uh, Plan Mac Engineering and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this morning with regard to our Conroe kind of 28 design study. And I think um, uh, everybody has a copy of the presentation slides. I'm just going to go through uh, the various slides that sort of highlight some of the key aspects of where we are with the study. And then of course can answer uh, questions. So the purpose of uh, today's presentation is to provide, uh, great, there is the, uh, thank you for that. So there's the, uh, the presentation slide. Uh, so if we go to, yeah, page two. So the purpose is to provide a brief update on our County Road 48 project. And to summarize the activities that were completed uh, following our last uh, meeting, which was with council uh, September the 3rd of last year. And it was at that, uh, that meeting that we discussed the scope of a, some additional drainage studies that were uh, recommended. So I'd like to present and, and update council on the outcome of that uh, drainage study. And then I'd like to talk about the next steps and where we're headed. This next slide here just quickly uh, outlines the general scope of the County Road 48 project. Essentially, um, um, as the mayor had mentioned, it encompasses Ottawa Street, Quebec Street, George Street, and Mary Street. And it's a full reconstruction to urban design standards. Um, it's intended to address the roadway improvements and also as part of that work, replace the existing municipal infrastructure including water main, sanitary sewer and services. 
Um, one of the key aspects of the project is to improve drainage, uh, replace concrete sidewalks. Uh, there is some realignment proposed at the intersection of George Street and Mary Street and general restoration of the roadway corridor. Currently, the design study is at uh, what we refer to as a 60% design level. And, um, and now we're looking to move forward towards a 90% uh, stage. Now that we've come to what we believe is a resolution on the drainage requirements for the project, and that's something I'll be speaking uh, further about shortly. And um, yeah, the key was to come up with a, a new strategy for a storm sewer and outlet on Ottawa Street. So this slide here just summarizes the, uh, what we have done since the September uh, 3rd council meeting. So we initiated a, a drainage study to look at alternative options for a new storm sewer collection system and outlet either on Ottawa Street or south of Ottawa Street to manage stormwater runoff in the west half of the village of Havelock. And this was important to alleviate concerns that the design team had identified with the existing storm pipe and outlet that runs underneath the CPR rail yard. And also with the continued use of storm sewers that cut through private property, um, through backyards and such. And so we were looking to come up with a, a better solution and alternative to manage uh, stormwater within the municipal road allowances. <clears throat> One of the first things we did is we uh, extended our topographic survey and engineering base plans <clears throat> in order to uh, have the data necessary to complete our assessment of alternative drainage options. So we looked at um, a number of options, including a gravity pipe system, as well as pumping station methods. And as a result of our evaluation, we determined that a gravity pipe system was the preferred approach. Then with that in mind, we looked at alternative alignments to construct a new storm sewer within the Ottawa Street Road Allowance. And, uh, and also on the CPR land. So we, um, given everything that's within the Ottawa Street Road Allowance, uh, we looked at the possibility of positioning the storm sewer on CPR lands at a location just north of the most northerly railway track. And um, so we, we developed that alternative proposal and preliminary design for discussion purposes with, with CPR. We also completed a hydraulic drainage assessment to determine what size of pipes would be required to convey the flows from the west half of the village to the new outlet. Um, and the new outlet being uh, the existing drainage channel just on the south side of Ottawa Street immediately west of the William Street intersection. And that's where there is a large box culvert crossing under, under Ottawa Street. Just the south of the drainage outlet, uh, there is another, well, there's a, a culvert structure under the CPR tracks. And we also did an investigation of that structure and did a hydraulic analysis to determine um, what the hydraulic capacity of that structure was. And we found that it was relatively small in size and therefore determined that it was deficient. And a result of its deficiency in conveying the, the existing stormwater conditions, um, we note that upstream flooding occurs, which at times can extend to the north side of Ottawa Street. We also carried out a CCTV inspection of the existing storm sewer under the uh, CPR rail yard. 
And that's, that pipe starts essentially on the south side of Ottawa Street, immediately across from Quebec Street. It is a 600 diameter concrete pipe that runs directly south <clears throat> under the tracks and then outlets into the wetland area um, to the south. And we put a uh, camera through the pipe and we're able to determine that uh, for the most part, the, it's, a, it's a combination, mostly a concrete pipe. Um, and the concrete is ex exhibiting signs of some uh, deficiencies, some cracking and some minor displacement of the joints, um, but nothing that uh, suggests that right now that the pipe was uh, at risk of failure. However, at some point after the concrete pipe was installed, there was a CSP pipe exp extension that was added. And we believe that was added to accommodate the construction of, a, um, of the gravel access road that provides access to the CPR yards. And that particular CSP pipe, uh, we found to be severely um, eroded, uh, rusted out, and uh, with the bottom of it practically uh, rusted right out. So <clears throat> we've identified that it's important to go in and have that pipe, at least that CSP pipe extension replaced in order to prevent a potential failure and which would result in some drainage flooding that could occur upstream. We are currently coordinating this work with CPR and, tr and working with them to develop a strategy to get in there and get it replaced. Um, it is work that will, it is under the responsibility of the township to replace that pipe <clears throat> as it's part of the maintenance agreement um, with CPR. And um, so the work will be done by the township um, once we get approval from CPR to go in and do the work. <clears throat> the next slide presents our drainage proposal for our alignment for the new storm sewer on CPR lands. <clears throat> and if you can see the, the dark blue line, um, that's the alignment of the proposed new storm sewer. The other blue lines that cut across or across Ottawa Street at Quebec Street, Oak Street, um, Orange and Mill Lane, those are additional pipe crossings that would connect into the new storm sewer. They would pick up drainage from the north and then convey it to the south into this new trunk sewer. And this new trunk sewer would extend easterly and outlet into the drainage channel um, as you can see towards the um, right hand side of the aerial drawing. And that's located just west of William Street. It took some time, but we finally got a response from CPR that essentially um, said that they would not uh, endorse our proposal. Uh, they want to protect their properties for potential future expansion. So this alternative uh, uh, is no longer feasible. It was our preferred approach because we felt it was from a construction perspective, it was an easier alignment to construct with less impacts to utilities and traffic and, and of course less cost. But unfortunately, uh, CPR will not, uh, will not allow us. So if we go to the next slide, we, our alternative alignment was to put it on Ottawa Street itself. Uh, we started looking at potential locations and unfortunately due to the um, location of buildings and utilities and other infrastructure uh, and property constraints itself, there was no room within the boulevard to put this new storm sewer. So we will need to put it within the driving lane and based on the location of the other utility, utilities and services, which um, for the most part on the, are on the north side of Ottawa Street, we are looking to put the new storm sewer system essentially within the middle of the eastbound 
lane. And, uh, and that is generally depicted in the below image again with the blue line. And again, it'll run easterly and outlet into the drainage channel um, just on the south side of the box cover. If we go to the next slide, the, um, we have identified a number of drainage challenges um, that will need to be considered and resolved. Uh, so the new storm sewer will outlet into the open ditch drainage channel on the south side of Ottawa Street, uh, just at the existing box culvert crossing. As I mentioned earlier, just south of there, there is a, that existing CPR culvert structure that the channel drains to and under. And so we did an analysis of that structure and found that is, it is deficient in terms of the ability to convey uh, the design storm events, which would be the five and to the 100 year storm events. So it's deficient in terms of flow capacity. And as a result, it results in upstream flooding that occurs. And based on our flooding models, it could extend north on Ottawa Street and impact private property on the north side. The solution to this drainage deficiency is to replace the existing culvert. Currently, it, it is a one of those old concrete arch culverts it has an opening of about 1.5 meters and a height of about 1.2 meters. And the, the recommended new culvert structure would be have an opening of three meters and a height of about two meters. And we have discussed this with CPR and identified that this is a drainage um, issue. Their initial response back to us is this would be a township undertaking and it would follow the process, the typical process um, resulting in an agreement between the township and CPR for its construction. Um, and a similar, and it would be a similar agreement that's in place today for that storm sewer, a small diameter storm sewer, which is um, at the West End. And uh, we have posed the question to CPR as if if they would be willing to cost share for the replacement of this culvert. And today we have not heard back from them on that particular question. So the replacement of this culvert would be a fairly, fairly major undertaking. And it's something that we're gonna continue to look at. But in the interim, if, the, if it could not be constructed um, at this time, then we were looking at the possibility of, or to utilize the vacant lands on the north side of Ottawa Street, which are owned by the township. And the, the intent would be to construct a, a stormwater management pond on those lands. And that, would, that pond would be designed to manage the flooding in the backwater um, that occurs on the south side. And that would be done in a manner to avoid flooding of private property on either side of those lands. We, th we would consider the pond, the pond could be a, a temporary permanent measure. It could be temporary in the sense that if, the, if a new box culvert was installed under the CPR tracks, then to convey the storm flows, then the pond would no longer be required and it could be repurposed back to a building lot. But we are looking to look move forward with the option of using those lands as a stormwater management facility. So this image here um, illustrates the, the line in blue is the new storm sewer outlet into the on the south side of the box culvert on Ottawa Street into the open drainage ditch. On the north side of Ottawa Street is a, is a square where we're indicating the proximate conceptual location of a stormwater facility. And just, uh, you can see some dash red lines that illustrate the location of the culvert structure under the CPR tracks that um, then convey flows and 
when the flows go through the CPR structure on the south side, there is uh, both an open ditch that goes uh, on the west side of the Rotary Park, but there is also a 900 diameter storm sewer that picks up water at the south end of the CPR culvert and conveys it to an open ditch um, just, just on the south side of those, um, of those storage units. And between the storm sewer and the open ditch, there is sufficient capacity to convey the floodwaters, but it's just a matter of getting the water through the, the smaller CPR culvert first. And um, so if we could achieve that, then our drainage issues would be resolved. But uh, that particular replacement of the culvert would, would be a relatively expensive undertaking and would require considerable uh, negotiations and agreement with CPR. And, um, and that could take some time to resolve. On this next slide, highlighting some of the recent consultations that we've had with MTO. So at the end of July this year, we had a meeting with MTO to discuss the status of I think that is that froze up, is it? Uh, through the chair, it's uh, Peter Nelson with the County of Peterborough. Okay. I could pick up uh, the presentation if yeah, if that's acceptable. Peter. Yes, go ahead, Peter. We are frozen up here on our end. Okay. Thank uh, you. Maybe Brad can, uh, um, Brad Kalis can uh, sign on shortly, but uh, yes, with respect to the NTO uh, consultation, we did have uh, meetings with, with uh, NTO staff, in particular regarding the uh, Mary Street intersection. Um, the NTO advised they have not uh, commenced uh, on scoping out uh, uh, design assignment for this work. Uh, recognize that uh, there is a, a need to, to undertake some design modifications at that location, but uh, do not have funding available at this time. Um, with respect to the uh, proposed storm sewer on Ottawa Street, they did acknowledge that uh, there's the potential for, uh, I guess, a, a component of the pipe to be eligible for funding under the NTO Connecting Link program. Uh, so that's uh, an application that would be uh, be able to be submitted and uh, that's a, a topic for uh, uh, upcoming on the next uh, uh, couple of slides. Uh, we had a follow-up uh, discussion with the MTO in September to review the scope of the drainage improvements that would come down Ottawa Street. Um, they're fully aware of this, this project and uh, uh, Mac is in the process of preparing a, a, a connecting link funding application for that scope of work. Uh, the next slide that presents uh, next steps for the project. So uh, IMAC would uh, prepare and submit the MTO Connecting Link uh, funding application. Uh, that would consider uh, the Ottawa Street uh, storm sewer. Uh, they're at the various intersections and along Ottawa Street, uh, IMAC will need to do some uh, subsurface utility investigations in order to locate any potential conflicts with a, a new sewer pipe, um, both crossing Ottawa Street and, and uh, traversing down the eastbound lane. Uh, as uh, Brad did mention, uh, the CSP pipe um, at the end of the uh, Quebec Street storm sewer crossing runs under the railway tracks. That's to be replaced by uh, township staff, staff. So we're uh, very fortunate to have uh, Peter Lawson and his crew to, to take care of that uh, for us. We have a meeting uh, pending with uh, Curve Lake First Nation as part of our uh, Indigenous consultation on this project. Uh, Ottawa, Street, Ottawa Street would have a historical uh, content. Uh, so there's a potential for archeological uh, uh, findings to be discovered as, as excavation continues along Ottawa Street. So that uh, will be part of a, an archeological study. 
as well. And uh, all of this requires uh, funding, certainly. So uh, we've requested Plan Map to prepare a work plan and a budget, these additional uh, investigations to support uh, the design and installation of a, a storm sewer along Ottawa Street. Uh, so that uh, with that uh, uh, assured outlet, we'll be able to continue with uh, the analyzing the design on, on the County Road 48 project, which uh, was was the start of the project, but uh, it, it's on hold pending the results of the training review. Um, we do have a pending application with the uh, Investing in Canada Infrastructure app, uh, Program. Uh, that was submitted, uh, uh, I guess, uh, December, January of 2020. Uh, so that uh, a response to that application is pending. Uh, wherever hopeful. Uh, this is a significant project uh, for both the township and the county to, to consider. And uh, finally, the next step, uh, we do uh, we do have a uh, pending public information center to present the results of uh, the County Road 48 project design and as well uh, the new uh, storm sewer on, on Ottawa Street. But, uh, I'd like to hear from the public on any comments or concerns that they may have with this project. So, thank you, uh, Mayor Martin. We'll turn the turn the floor back to you. All right, thank you, Peter. Um, oh, there's the screen just changed again. Um, technology, um, unfortunately, we lost Brad, and I didn't actually realize you were on there. So that's a bonus there. You can pick it up. Um, this is a huge project for the township and the county, and there's a lot of pieces to it, and. Uh, it looks like it's well underway as far as in the planning process and uh, um, nothing is easy in Havelock, Belmont, Methuen when it comes to getting rid of water. So uh, um, anyways, it sounds like quite a quite a undertaking, but uh, um, I think some of the pieces to it with regards to CP and uh, the federal government, uh, hopefully they can help us with this to get rid of that water, but uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know if council has any questions. I'll turn it, I'll open it up to council. If you have any questions or comments with regards to this project, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, I have a pile of questions. I couldn't, I, I couldn't have them all answered today. Um, I would like council to be able to sit down with the uh, engineers and go over this proposal again, because there's too many, too many um, things that are, are overlooked like first of all for to bring a pipe down number seven highway um how deep is it, it it's one huge pipe and we know from the the garage across the road there that we had you know x number of pipes or pumps running there for 24 hours a day to get the water table down so that we could uh, they could get their tanks in the ground um we're on a swamp you know, we're built on a swamp, really. Um, so then they'd have to reroute the traffic too on number seven. So where is it going to go? I don't really, like. There's so many unanswered things here, and the water that comes down from the north in our existing drain there that comes out, oh, just west of the the culvert there at William Street. Um, there's a pile of water comes out of the north there. And there's, there's just so many things that has to be looked at. And I think council should be part of it. This is, this is something that we all have to have a look at it. We all have to ask questions and we don't have time, you know, at a regular meeting like this for to, for to ask all these questions. Like I could go on and on and on with a bunch more, but I'm not going to because it takes up time. But I still think we should meet, whether it be at the arena or wherever we can do our social distancing, but uh, bring the, uh, the blueprints out and put them down and everyone go over them and everyone has an equal opportunity to ask questions. You know, this to me is the way I look at it. The county's getting rid of their water off of off the county and off their county road. And anyway, I won't take it any further than that. But I, okay, I, well, I would request a meeting. 
Yeah, or you can phone them, Barry, any time to go over if you like. It's, uh, it is an engineer. There's a lot of engineering went into this, and I'm not an engineer. So they're telling us what we need. And if we need to understand it better, the best thing to get a quicker response probably would be to phone and go over some of your concerns, I would think. But we can have a meeting as it moves on, you know, but it's going to hold things up here. Um, like I said, nothing is easy as far as getting rid of water. And this is a huge engineering project that none of us have <clears throat> any, any uh, experience in. Uh, other than we can say as far as those two lots there and creating a pond, we can ask why. There is some questions, but uh, the quickest way would probably to phone and uh, find out. And there will be another meeting coming forward as we move forward, I would think here, Peter. But uh, um, but good, good comments anyway, Barry. Um, is yeah, there any uh, other? Yeah, I, I still have. A, I still think we should have a meeting. A phone call is no good. All of council should be involved. This is a big project. Yeah, and we're going to have to answer to a lot of people. So, um, I think the sooner we could have a meeting, the better. And and let's let's get these questions out there, and and have them answered before they start. No use of you know closing the gate after the horse has gone out. Okay, Peter, you had a comment there. Uh, thank you, through the chair. Um, with respect to the idea of a meeting, uh, uh, the project team, uh, county staff, Climax staff, and and township staff, we'd be more than happy to meet with uh, council if that's if that's uh, your preference. Uh, uh, certainly, the the uh, the arena would provide uh, ample space for social distancing, physical distancing, and, and we could lay out uh, copies of the uh, of the preliminary design drawing for. For the project and, and uh, allow council to, to fully consider, um, give you some time to pull together questions. Um, this project is is a significant undertaking for both our our uh, municipalities, um, and it's going to affect affect so many so many people, particularly the Ottawa Street corridor. Um, it, okay, so, that's so that, good. We're certainly available. Thank you. That's good, Peter. If you could get that going as soon as possible, because like you say, this is a huge project and that's why it's been left for so long. This should have been done years ago. Um, unfortunately, it's, we, well, we've never had the money and we still don't have the money. So um, it looks like a good plan, but it would be good if we could have a meeting that we could go over it. Uh, some people like a visual more than just looking at it on a computer and it is better if you lay it all out and we can, uh, talk about it, but I don't think there's a lot we can say as far as if this is what it takes as an engineer to get rid of water, we're going to have to find a way of doing it. So Dave, go ahead. And then did Larry, did you have your hand up? Um, go okay. ahead, uh, Deputy Mayor Jerome. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Dave. Mr. Mayor, I just want to say thank you both for your presentation. It uh, certainly gives us a broader scope of what actually has to take place here. I know we've all thought about different ideas and different ways that this can happen, but like the mayor said, we're not engineers and it will be interesting to sit down and, and get a good look at it and uh, have a discussion about it. But uh, it was a good presentation. And, uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. So Larry, did you have something? If you didn't, uh, then- um, Hear you, Mr. Mayor, just a quick comment. Um, as all have stated, we're not engineers, but uh, the, the uh, knowledge and experience that people like uh, Councillor Pomeroy have and understand all the little intricacies that can happen to this type of project or what it can cause. So I think uh, most definitely to sit down and voice those concerns, whether it's engineering concerns or how to just how to uh, do things concerns. So yeah, in favor of a meeting. Thank you. Good. Okay. Mark, go ahead. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, just Mark? a question for yeah, just a question for clarification. So um it said CP um denied the, the proposal. Did did they um, deny doing or not agree to doing any work on their lands, or was that just the the um, the new storm sewer proposal? Like basically, what I'm referring to is the the, 
the sewer that drains under the yeah. highway over there. It's okay if, with us repairing that, and or was it no work to be done on CPR lands? Okay, Brad, do you have an answer to that? Uh, yeah, and first of all, um, I apologize for uh, for cutting out on you guys, uh, but yeah, no, the um, uh, CPR just didn't want any uh, any work on their property, didn't want any new infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> on their lands and um so and as as i think i mentioned they were looking just to protect their right away um in the event of future expansion plans so uh yeah so the answer was yeah no no ex no work on their land thank you all right then uh, any other questions there barry you had some other ones did you or do you want to wait till the meeting wait till the meeting jim okay all right, then. So if there is a way of, you know, getting a, a meeting over, you know, at the arena or somewhere, wherever suitable, um, an in-person meeting would go a long way, Peter or Brad. So if you could do that as soon as possible, give us a couple of dates and uh, I'm sure we can make something work. Um, I just see Bob pop up on there. Do you have something to add, Bob? Uh, yeah, through you, Mayor Martin, we will certainly consult with... Uh with all the relevant players and we will propose a few dates to council going forward. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you for this report. Is If there's nothing else, um, we do have quite an agenda here, so I'll move on, but uh, um, thank you for this and we will look forward to a, to a, pub, or to a meeting in person. Um, so I'll get a motion to receive this delegation. Moved by Councillor Webb and seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you, guys. Our next delegation is uh, Kevin Duguay, and uh, it's with regards to uh, act an access plan. Uh, um, if Kevin could come forward here on this, it, uh, I'll, we'll take his report. Welcome, Kevin. Uh, good morning, Your Worship, members of council, staff. I'm assuming people can hear me. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I'm, am I able to ask now staff to uh, screen share? Mm -hmm. Your worship, that coffee looks really good. I must tell you. I've been <laughs> I thought I'd sneak that in there. Yeah. Okay. So um, if I can, uh, I'm going to uh, walk council through a proposed access plan for the term 2020-2025. This is a provincial mandate. This has to be, uh, each municipality in Ontario is obliged to carry this out. So in preparing for this, I've worked with uh, uh, staff, uh, uh, Mr. Angioni. I reviewed various planning documents, uh, your previous access plan, and I can advise the municipality that I, as a planning consultant, have carried out access plans for the county, the township of Selwyn, the municipality of Trent Lakes, the city of Cortha Lakes, and municipalities across Ontario and Canada. So what, I'm just going to walk you through the proposed access plan. And then at the end, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to respond to same. We can go to the next screen. All right, so they, the summary. So it's a five-year term. And one of the things that I identified in my discussions with staff in 2019 and 2020, that there has been some partial work uh, carried out on some of your municipal facilities from an accessibility clients, uh, compliance perspective, but it's not complete. So what we've recommended is that an audit, a compliance audit of all of your facilities, so your library, your municipal office, your arenas, playgrounds, for example, would be carried out this fall and that, or it could start next year, but ideally we could do it this fall. And then we identify for council's approval with staff input, a priority program of what buildings or what features of what buildings should be improved starting in year 2021. Now, this is a similar approach that many municipalities that I've worked with have taken. So you spend a little bit of money each year on a priority basis. And uh, it's admittedly 15 years ago, your worship, 
there was a lot of funding. Ten years ago, there was less funding. Five years ago, he's even less. But there still are some pockets of funding available. And the access plan and the compliance audit, audit, for example, might be able to assist and leverage, say, Trillium funding or partnership funding. So you can see, starting in year one, you would be uh, addressing those priority, we call them priority one. So the first uh, buildings, and then we just care, the program just carries on. And at the end of the term, you stop and decide if you need to do any more. We go to the next screen. So in year 2020, that's this year, uh, the customer service standard, I've actually worked behind the scenes. I've updated your brochure. COVID-19 has has seriously impacted our ability to do any staff training. So I've developed an online resource, which uh, Mr. Angioni can share with all municipal staff and council. And perhaps I can ask Mr. Angioni, uh, Bob, is that presentation also included in today's agenda? Uh, yes, it is. It follows right, so this I'll, presentation. Great. So your worship, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move through this access plan and then I'm going to uh, respond to any questions and then I'm going to walk council and staff through the, the uh, customer service standard, which really represents your training and how this resource can then be used for all of your municipality, key volunteers and staff. So in year 2020, we're proposing to update the uh, standard, the brochure, it's done. We would carry out training with staff, which will be in council, which will be done virtually as well as volunteer firefighters. The other standards by and large are being met or really aren't that applicable for a, a smaller township. But you will note that in the uh, design of public uh, spaces, you will note that we're recommending an, ex an accessibility compliance audit be carried out this fall. And that work um, conceivably is work that my company can carry out. If we go to your, the next green. So year 2021, you're always ensuring that your customer service standard is being uh, applied and conceivably you can share whatever information you have to your community, businesses, nonprofits, your employment program is ongoing. So look, oh, this is basically ongoing and you'll see in all the ensuing years, you're continuing to roll out your, the results of your compliance audit. So your worship and council, what's important, you're not again from your compliance audit we would with staff input decide what buildings, what features need to be done on a priority basis. You're not having to spend a bunch of money all in year one. It could be spread out over a five-year term. We go to the next screen. So again, it's very similar, very similar language. Um, now the one unpredictability in all this is the province has had a propensity to update the legislation. Uh, it's possible by 2022, we may see some changes to the legislation, but I suspect everything will the spirit and intent will remain applicable 2023 the next screen so you're starting to wind down your you're really starting to wind down your uh, uh, design of public spaces your compliance audit work and then in year 2024 you have finished your work and you start looking at you summarize all the work you did because you actually have to write your access plan for 2025 to 2029 at the end of 2024 and then you can complete uh, in 2025 that's the transition year where you look again where you prepare your your now your access plan i'm not sure if the access plan your worship will have to be from 2026 or from 2025 that's a matter the province can chime in so it's a fairly straightforward access plan but the one financial uh, reality to uh, the municipality would be this, what we call the proposed accessibility compliance audit. So I'll just walk council through uh, some of the uh, next materials. So the compliance audit will cover all your buildings in throughout the township. If we can move to the next screen. So what we identify on a property by property or building basis these, these, the, the facilities and how they measure up against the province's public space design standard. So that looks at things like parking spaces, location of parking spaces, walk paths, doorways, ramps, and some of the interior public components of those buildings. Now I'm aware the municipality has undertaken some work recently and congratulations to that effect. But this, this would be 
to do all your buildings to ensure that they, uh, how they stack up against the current standard. So then what we would be doing once that work's done is to advance a recommendation for council to consider over a four year term, what buildings, what features on an annual basis over four year term. And then we would review, we'd also be reviewing your worship as part of this. We'd also be taking part of the audit also looks at your site and building signage, which is important from a wayfinding perspective. And we can, um, it also provides to some of your staff, your senior staff, some hands-on learning in uh, dealing with accessibility compliance audits. So this work that I've done, that I'm proposing, uh, has carried out with other municipalities. I did, essentially staff were trained as part of that audit work so that I become less and less involved. I, I, I'm, I'm a believer that, you know, you're, if you do your, uh, consulting correctly, that staff eventually will have the appropriate tools and resources to do this work uh, within the municipality. And then we also would be providing one of the things that you would receive is an, a compliance uh, worksheet, which then let's imagine your worship another business decides after you've finished your highway seven repairs. I follow the other presentation. Let's say a business comes in and wants some help understanding what they would need to do staff would have some resources they could make available to that business. Now we'll go to the next page. And this just shows some sample work. Just uh, we, I was, we were hired to carry out audits of all the municipal facilities in Whitby. And so that you could see, we photographed the buildings. We identify some, some of the features. We'll go to the next screen. Again, this is just showing the various facilities we had to look at. And we started identifying, if we can move to the next screen, this is how we, in very simple manner, how we identify the priorities, three priorities per building. And then we assigned a cost where we could to those improvements. So the Marina, the Brooklyn Community Center and others. So we kept the priority simple. And um, we then identified a work program over four years for Whitby. We go to the next screen. And then we describe, sorry, we describe some of the, uh, the changes, what they mean. And we hop to the next screen. Oh, sorry. So we also developed for Whitby, if I can't stop there, on those items, your worship, we did identify where possible uh, a cost estimate. Now, this compliance audit is not to design your space, not for the, not for the uh, 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 proposed uh, cost. For, it's essentially to uh, stop time, do a compliance audit, and identify and advance recommendations. This process has worked. It's worked in many of your sister municipalities throughout Peterborough County and uh, Central East Ontario. So that's your access plan, which is... Your municipality is obliged to accept or approve an access plan. The one um, um, interesting component to this is within the plan is a recommended undertaking to do a compliance audit. And I have spoke, I have chatted with Mr. Angioni that my firm would be prepared and is capable of carrying out that work. Uh, and we could start uh, and have that work done this fall. And I would be prepared, Your Worship, to answer any questions relating to the proposed access plan at this time. Thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, yeah, there's a lot to this. And unfortunately, there's a lot of cost that's gonna go with it, I would imagine too. So um, I see like you you showed Whitby and um, you did comment that some of the smaller municipalities don't have as much to deal with as, or some of the things are a little different. Uh, um, so you've been working for smaller municipalities too? Uh, your Worship, I have worked um, in, uh, I can tell you, Northern Ontario, Marathon, Manitowoc, Sioux Lookout, Dryden, um, Schreiber, Terrace Bay, in our part of the this world, uh, Selwyn, uh, Trent Lakes, uh, City of Cortha Lake, City of Peterborough, County of Peterborough. And the, the, the cost, Your Worship, to carry out the audit is not significant. And some of the, uh, some of the, uh, compliance work might be something as changing door knobs on doors. Now, some of it admittedly could be expensive, but I've already looked at your arena and you've already carried forth a good program. There may be some finishing touches. So the audit to carry out the audit is not expensive to carry out some of the work 
that may be your expense. And that's why we're recommending a program dispersed over a four or five year term. All right, that sounds good. I'll open it up to council. Um, any questions or comments? And where, where you would like to go with it? Deputy Mayor Jarrell, go ahead. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for your uh, presentation. It's, uh, You're welcome. Something that, something that we've known has, um, and in reality, it's here. So I, I think we don't have any choice. We're gonna move forward with this. I think in the future, we're gonna find out the costing, but as of today, we don't know that. But we are a council with a responsibility to make these uh, um, changes possible. We have been mandated by the government to see that they're done. So I think it's time to get moving forward with them. Thank you for your presentation. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as we go through this process um, regarding costing, um, so when the audit would be completed, would there be a separate costing as we mo I guess what I'm trying to say is when we walk through this um, for costing reasons, when the audit would be completed, would it be a costing for the audit? And then as we go further, um, expecting costing, more costing. So I guess I'm trying to find out if when the audit's complete, is there a cost for the audit? Your, your, uh, your worship and response, yes, there is a cost for the audit. I have provided that information to uh, uh, at Mr. Angioni's request that was provided to the township um, uh, prior to this uh, meeting, um, where this audit will identify priorities and where we can, we will try to identify and offer some cost estimates where we can, but a compliance audit is not intended to be a costing um, exercise because if it, if it is, frankly, the cost of your audit will quadruple. It will become very, because now you're involving architects and other professions. We're identifying your priorities where I identify so that you can budget. And then for example, let's say it's an entrance to a building, you would, and then you would retain the required professionals to carry out that study and identify the cost. Yeah, so I guess that's what I was looking for, the costing and to identify the requirements. In that's your correct. <clears throat> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm gonna be helping you with. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so Bob, you have the costing as far as what the audit would cost then, is that? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Yes, we do have a costing. Uh, we it was requested earlier this year. Okay. All right. So, what's council's thoughts? Uh, we do have to um, move on with this. It's something that we don't really have a choice of, and it sounds like Kevin's done a lot of these already. So, uh, um, what do you require today, Bob? So, through you, Mayor Martin, what we require today is a is a resolution uh, to adopt the accessibility plan as it was presented by Mr. Dugay. Okay, Barry, go ahead. I will do that. Okay. I'll make a motion to that effect. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by. Second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Ellis. All in favor of the motion? Oh, sorry. Question. Question. Okay. Just a second here. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Angioni has got the costing, but council doesn't have that costing. So unless I have some upward limit of what that costing is, I don't feel that I, I mean, I need to know what it's gonna cost before I vote. Yeah. I think we didn't receive that, did we, Bob? Did we get that at an earlier meeting then? Uh, I would have to double check that through you, Mayor Martin. However, I can I can present it verbally uh, right now with uh, a correction from Mr. Dugay if required. I believe the uh, the estimate was between three and five thousand. Thank you for that. Yeah, good point, Dave. Sorry about that. Um, and your worship, that amount is correct. It would not it would not exceed um, five thousand. I would imagine your the cost would be around forty two forty five hundred HST. And it will be a comprehensive report as well. Thank you. I'm not sure how long ago that was, but uh, maybe you did bring it forward, Bob, because the numbers sound familiar. But anyways, um, 
Thank you, Dave. And uh, so we do have a mover and a seconder, and we now have the numbers confirmed in there. So uh, um, what's council's thoughts? All in favor? All right, carried. Thank you. Your Worship, I think there might be a second part. I'm, you're not yeah. done with me yet. <laughs> no, so, customer service standard. So you're, for the, the purposes for your Worship and members of council and senior staff, um, the province has various uh, standards. One is your customer service standard. And uh, Mr. Angioni and I just dis discussed that as part of, part of this project, the other part was to look at your customer service standard, update, uh, the standard. So this will serve as your uh, tr mandatory training as counselors and senior staff. So this resource is available now to you. This can be shared with all your municipal staff and volunteers, key volunteers, plus behind the scenes, I've also updated your customer service standard brochure as part of that uh, mandate. So if we can, we're going to go through the customer service standard and what does it mean to a municipality? We'll go to the next screen. So I'm going to walk you through the standard and I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about universal design. We'll hop to the next screen. So there's important principles, dignity, independence, integration, equal opportunity. And uh, having spent time, uh, I was finally able to travel to Windsor recently to spend time with my mother who uh, does require a mobility device. And I can assure you all four of those <laughs> principles when it involves my mother and trying to do anything with my mom, whether it's taking to our bank or taking to a restaurant, all of these points are relevant and they mean a great deal to a person with disability. We'll move to the next screen. So the regulation came into effect in 2008. It applies to the obligated sectors and it also applies to uh, businesses as well. So it's just not municipalities and hospitals and school boards weren't the only ones impacted by this standard. We'll go to the next screen. So there is a standard. The province has, your worship, oodles of resources available, a lot. What we've attempted to do here is develop a PowerPoint document and something can be put in print. And you can also share this information with any interested businesses within your community. We'll move to the next screen. So you need to document your in writing your policies. That's being done. You need to notify customers that documents. That's being done. And under giving documents required to a standard to a person, somebody would be able to read them, hear them. Uh, and I, for that extent, I've actually asked Mr. Angioni to provide me some sample agendas and uh, your documents. And their your print form of your documents and forms are in good order. They would meet this as structured. They would meet the standard. So congratulations. We'll hop to the next screen. The key, the key, if the message that I have learned about dealing with persons with disabilities is dignity and respect and asking, how may I help you? As opposed to just simply either ignoring or assume the person need help, you ask, how may I help you? We'll go to the next screen. So the standard requires that you establish policies and practices, which you have. It also requires that you use reasonable efforts to ensure your policies, practices, procedures are consistent with these core principles. And to that extent, I can say what I have seen and read today, you, you have done that. We'll go to the next screen. You're gonna set a policy to allow a person. So if somebody was attending this meeting, virtual meeting, and they needed a screen reader, uh, they would have their own technology. But by virtue of you using this uh, format, it does, it has the ability to potentially reach out to other person. So they can hear the meeting, they can see the meeting. And we also, it requires that we communicate with the person with a disability in a manner that takes into account his or her, her disability. We'll move to the next screen. This also speaks to things allowing persons to use guide dogs or working dogs to uh, accommodate them or to travel with them to various places. There was a very interesting and significant lawsuit in Toronto where a restaurant owner refused the entry of a working dog. And I can advise counsel the outcome for the business owner was not pretty. Uh, there was uh, the, the, the case, uh, there was a settlement and it has established the precedent across the province that working dogs particularly are permitted in uh, restaurants and can accompany uh, their owners. And again, we provide 
there's different things that are required. So for example, there was a disruption to your arena or for example, disruption to your main street uh, during construction around signage to advise persons that passive travel may be impacted. We'll go to the next screen. And that you would train staff and volunteers and contractors. So uh, to Mr. Angioni, for example, the proposal, the access plan proposal, the service I would provide, he needs to be satisfied that my company has the appropriate customer service training and will provide that documentation as being a contractor for uh, your municipality. You're also obliged to train staff, volunteers and contractors, which we're doing now by talking to council. And you can establish a process for feedback. And I believe that's already available on your website and referenced in your customer service brochure. We go to the next screen. Now, I wanted to take a couple of minutes and if you'll indulge me to talk a little bit about universal design. And we will now go, oh, by the way, that very, this screen itself, this screen. One of the things that we've learned and around universal design and presentation is that your presentations should in, employ strong color contrasting and very simple non-successive capital letters. So you'll notice on this screen, black lettering, non-successive capitalization on a, with a strong color contract, black with a light blue background, very easy to follow and read and understand that language. So that's an important principle of universal design and presentations. Go to the next screen. Okay, so universal design, products and environments that can be used by everybody to the greatest extent possible without needing to adapt or create something else. So the push paddle on a door, pretty, most, almost all persons can use that push paddle on a door to operate a, a door or alternatively pocket doors are even better. We'll go to the next screen. So here are our principles, equitable use. The design is useful and marketable to persons, people with diverse ability. So a pool ramp uh, or a ramp sidewalk combination. This could equally apply to an entrance in a building where you could have a combination of stairs and ramp leading to the same feature or entrance. Everybody is able to use that feature to gain access equitably to the feature. We'll go to the next screen. Flexibility in use. So the design accommodates a wide range of preferences and abilities. So here we have a public square that persons able-bodied and persons with requiring devices are able to use the same facility and that's accommodated through design. The next screen. So if I might, your worship, uh, I understand your municipality is contemplating the improvements and your the main street, the Highway 7 corridor. So there may be as part of that, you would want to ensure, for example, that any of your sidewalk features are barrier free, incl including the appropriate ramping at the end of the day. That would, that would accommodate the, the second principle. So the third principle is simple and intuitive use. And I'm using, for example, a street sign, a program the city of Peterborough introduced years ago strong color contrast in our signage. And you can see that street side from almost a block away. It's an example of how it accommodates somebody who actually has is sighted versus, and you can imagine now carrying that principle even to the extent of how we organize agendas, forms and, and PowerPoint presentations. We'll go to the next uh, screen. The whole notion about, uh, and this is important about perceptible information. So your sidewalks on your main street and your walkways leading to buildings that there is the design communicates information to the person who may or may not have vision, for example, so they know where to safely orient themselves as they may cross a path or cross a sidewalk. We go to the next screen. And then tolerance of error. So the design minimizes hazards. So we don't create tripping hazards and we don't create for example, items that are protruding unnecessarily into a walk path. This is an example of an earlier design of a rail system at City Hall, Peterborough, which incorporated strong color contrast in a railing and a full return of the handrail uh, to the main stem to avoid um, persons being able to catch that handrail <clears throat> on their hip when they're traveling perpendicular to it. Next screen. Uh, low physical effort. This is this design is actually the door operators for the elevator were both wall mounted and mounted on the floor so somebody could bump into the uh, call button with their foot. That's a brilliant design. Again, with minimum amount of effort, minimum amount of fatigue. And we'll move to the next screen. 
Number seven, around approach and size. So that the size and your approach and your reach, um, regardless of uterus, body position, posture, and mobility. And I um, mean, this is something that, uh, for example, retailers and food stores are really struggling with and about where they place uh, their items and how you may reach them. But that's what this, that's what this document, here, this principle is referring to. We'll go to the next screen. So uh, I'm gonna stop here, your worship. So the customer service standard incorporates uh, th this, this, this presentation can be made available to all of your municipal staff. So imagine somebody is working next summer uh, in a parks and rec capacity, they could sit down and quickly review this on their own handheld device phone. They could read your brochure, they could quickly review the access plan and that would provide them a good, fairly good understanding of the customer service standard. This same document can be shared with businesses and can be shared with all of your other key volunteers age. So it's a standalone document that satisfies the training component uh, by the standard. Mr. Angioni and administrative staff would simply be required to, to sign off that persons have reviewed the documents are knowledgeable of same. And I've also updated your customer service standard brochure uh, behind the scenes. So that's also been uh, prepared uh, for you. And I'd be, again, this is the tra training that now uh, council have heard this. This is basic, a very basic crash course in customer service standard. Uh, in some cases, I've had to do the training over a full day. In some cases, it, it would be a presentation like you've just received now as a council and senior staff. I would be able to respond to any questions should they arise. Thank you. All right, thank you, Kevin. And I'll ask right off the get go here. What's the cost of this then? Your Worship, this is already, this was uh, allowed for and done starting in 2019. So there, this okay. is, I, I, I think this plus the updating uh, and the resources was l less than $2,000, if I recall correctly. Now, remember, I took your access plan. I had to rewrite it. I've met with staff several times and we've come up with, and in th so the, this customer service standard document was one part, the access plan became sort of a sec, uh, part B to that. So okay. your customer service standard, essentially now, including your policies, this training manual, <clears throat> would rest with the municipality and would meet that requirement. The access plan, which you approved earlier, is now gonna be, sh would be shared with the province. So that's part B of this process. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot You're of- You're welcome. Lots of information here. I'll open it up to council. Any questions or comments? Seeing none. Um, yeah, so for today anyways, it's, uh, we can receive all this information and- uh, Yes. Um, sounds like we got a lot of reading to do ahead. So um, anyway, so I'll look for a motion from council. Thank you, Kevin, for all of this. You're welcome. Uh, I'll look to move on here. So I'll look for a motion to receive this delegation and all his input, um, moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux and seconded by, don't see any hands there. Um, Councillor Ellis, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, well, thank you, Kevin. You're um, quite welcome. Look forward to the, to the rest of this. So. I'll be following up with Mr. Angioni uh, uh, tomorrow, just in terms of the uh, access plan scheduling. Thank you, your worship and council. Okay. Enjoy your day, right. bye for now. Okay, thanks. Okay, the next part of our agenda is staff reports for information. And I just wanted to start off uh, um, last week, I was looking, there's something that we have on our stick, uh, on our data thing that uh, Bob shares with us every week. And for me, it was a long time since I looked at it. And uh, it was the government, the council action plan we did for government improvements. Um, we passed it about a year, a year and a half ago. And it's one of those things we don't, uh, look back at, but it might be something to take a look back at. And I've asked Bob if he could share this with uh, staff at future management meetings, but uh, it, A on the, on that uh, report that we passed was uh, with regards to reports and, and it was reports submitted to council should be clear, concise and transmit all relevant fact-based decisions, making information, including all known options for us. Um, in the past, little while we've had some struggles with uh, some reports to uh, whether all the information is there so 
um, just in the future, I've asked Bob to share this with council just to bring it back or with the staff just to bring it back out that how important that is for council to help us make decisions. So um, I thought I'd just open up with that as we go into staff reports for information here and uh, um, just remind staff to uh, try and include all of that. We need all the information so we can make proper decisions. So. Um, so with that, I'll move into the uh, the fire reports here from Ray. We have the report from July, August, and September. Um, is there any questions or comments with regards to those? If not, I'll take a motion to receive them. Moved by Councillor Ellis to receive them. And second by Councillor, sorry, moved by Councillor Webb, second by Councillor Ellis. Uh, did you have something to add there, Hart? Go ahead if you have something. No, I was just, well, just moving you're, freezing up, you're freezing up on my end here, Jim, so sorry. So okay. Oh, okay. All right, then. I don't know if that's mine or yours, but uh, okay. So we have a mover and a seconder. If there's no comments, all in favor of them moving those reports? Carried. Um, next, I have... Uh, report from uh, Ryan Andrew with regards to capital project updates. Any questions or comments with that? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to receive that report. Moved by Councillor Webb. Seconder. Do I have a seconder for the, that report? Uh, Councillor Ellis. Any comments with regards to that? I'll ask again there. I don't know whether I'm freezing up here or not, but uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor Giroux. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just just a for clarification on the report of Ryan's. Uh, on the second page is Park and Recs and Facilities Division. It's a capital budget plan 2020. There's a lot of stuff that's been moved forward or hasn't uh, taken place and been moved forward as far back as 2018, I don't imagine all of this is going to get done in 2020. We only got a couple of months left. So there's a lot of money involved. Is this going to be discussed at budget time or is this passed and done? How is this going to work? Okay, Ryan, go ahead. Uh, so through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, basically that chart that's supplied to council outlines uh, the target dates that um, staff are planning to complete the projects um, in, uh, and further into the, the chart, it, it does give you the status of the project and what we're planning on uh, being carried over or what we're going to complete this year. So it basically outlines there's only a, a hand, like maybe two or three projects that uh, we we're looking at carrying forward this year to, uh, to next year. So, um, but it, that information is all listed in the report for council. Thank you, Ryan. And it was already budgeted for Ryan? Yeah, so everything that's on um, in this report was approved through council at the budget uh, time. So there's other things that we're working on, but these are all just the approved projects. Thank you. So something moving forward, it's been really hard this year with everything shut down, but uh, something that was discussed last year, and it might be something to look at for the future, is something similar to what we do with the, with the road tour. Um, there's a lot of projects that were done this summer, and uh, I know I haven't seen them. I would be interested in seeing them, but it looks like uh, you've done a lot, and maybe in the future we should be doing a little bit of tour to see where our money was spent, because uh, not all of us are in all of these facilities. So just something to think about for the future, but uh, it would be good to do a little bit of a recreation tour just to see all the things that were accomplished yeah. when yeah. possible. So. Okay. All right. So do we have a mover and a seconder for this? Uh, sorry about that. I didn't write it down, but uh, moved by Councillor Webb that we received this report and seconded by Councillor Ellis, wasn't it? Or Council, Deputy Mayor Giroux. Sorry about that. All in favor? And that's carried. Um, we'll move into the next report for. Uh, Peter Lawson has a couple of reports here that were for information. Is there any questions or comments with them? If not, I'll take a motion to move them. 
Perry, are you moving it or did you have a question? Okay. Moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconder for both reports there of Peters. Seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? Our question there, Dave? Perhaps this is not the right time through you, Mirror, but I'd like to ask Peter a question. And I don't think my question is on that report, but if you'll allow me the opportunity, Peter, I've got uh, a couple more emails in regards to Preston Road in the sixth line. Are you there, Peter? Yes, go ahead, Dave. Um, I apologize, I never got back on the weekend and I did get some emails in regards to that. Is that week work all completed? Or yes, the, it's all I, completed. Through you, Mayor Martin. Yeah, I'm struggling here with the computer a little bit. Sorry, Deputy Mayor uh, Dro. Um, no, it's not. Uh, the, the work has all been completed, but uh, we are still uh, in the process of putting and installing this, the new signage. Uh, so we're getting some posts put in, and uh, in the future we will be uh, uh, putting a date up uh, when we actually are going to put all the signs up. So we'll be advertising through social media and uh, an ad in the local newspaper, as well as uh, some signs on Preston uh, at, before the intersection, the six line Preston and, uh, and Bird Dam, just uh, making people aware of the, uh, the new change in signs. Thank you for that, Peter. Yep. Thank you, Peter. Um, so we do have a move. Is there any more questions or comments? So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of this re these reports? And that's carried. Thank you. Um, the next report is Laura with regards to uh, conference. Uh, if there's any, is there any questions or comments with regards to that report? If not, I'll take a motion to move that report. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor? And that's carried. Next, we have the uh, budget schedule here. Um, I'll do these individually, but uh, we have the budget schedule here. Is there any questions or comments with regards to that? Uh, it is some pretty heavy days. That's the only comments I have with it as far as uh, I was hoping like half days to try and digest everything that's gonna be coming in. That's one of the problems we've had in the past, but uh, um, the report is here and what's council's thought. Anybody got any comments with regards to that? If not, I'll take a motion that we uh, approve the, uh, the schedule put out here and uh, we'll move on with our budget process. Somebody want to make a motion to uh, approve the budget schedule? Councillor Pomeroy, question or are you moving it? Moving it. Moving it. Okay. And the seconder, Councillor Webb, all in favor? Or do you have a comment there? Well, Councilor? yeah, just a question. I, I don't know. I, was, I guess it doesn't matter if you give it the all day. I was just wondering about for what we have on certain days, if you could, if we can move stuff between mornings and afternoons. I don't know how much that would change things, but. What I'm thinking is get some of the bigger things like parks and rec and roads and stuff in the mornings, move stuff like cemetery board and other things to the afternoons would make sense. Yeah, that might help a little bit, Wendland. Uh, so the dates, we'll go with the dates and then yeah. uh, before the schedule goes out to the people um, for what will be in the morning, that is a good <clears> suggestion <throat> as far as keeping some of them heavy ones in the morning. Um, okay. Yeah, I was just trying to nail down the dates. Um, the departmental can be um, turned around and uh, changed. Okay. All right. So, and yeah, that's, uh, I think that's good that we can uh, um, try and get some of the heavier things off, to, off in the beginning of the day. Um, Barry, go ahead. Yes, to Wendland. Um, when you get these all finalized, I guess the dates are finalized. Um, 
could you make me up a hard copy? I like to hang it, hang it up so I don't have to flip It'll also be posted on the website. So maybe uh, with the website posting, the dates will just be posted. And then as we know, uh, rolling out which departments are um, going to be in the morning or versus afternoon, we can change that uh, closer to the meeting. Thanks, Wedlin. <clears throat> and through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I realize these are all a week apart, but if we uh, get into some of this stuff that's taking up too much time, we might have to uh, maybe have other days that are, you know, to, to fill in for to uh, finish up. But it, it, there's a lot of work here. Yeah, and that's, you know, so, yeah, we, we've got, that's what I said, there's a lot here, and uh, um, it's pretty aggressive to try and get it done by the end of, the, or by the middle of December. I really think it's going to go past the new year. Uh, once we get into things, I don't think this is really going to get through that quickly, but uh, anyways, it, it is some dates to go by that we can get out to the public, uh, um, especially that October 30th meeting. It's something that needs to get out so the public can have their say in, in the budget. So, and it has two separate meetings. The one is by Zoom and the one is by appointment in the council chamber. I don't know whether you notice that, but uh, anyways, so that, that should be a good thing to help with both sides of it, the people that use the internet and the people that don't. Hopefully we can take care of uh, everybody at once there. Uh, it good. will be tricky with the distancing, so. The, the reason why we had the appointment in the afternoon as well, uh, um, cottagers may be coming up to the cottage that Friday afternoon that gives them an opportunity if they're driving from the south to get here in the afternoon so that's why we decided to do the zoom in the morning okay so we have the dates here um, and as far as the the order of what's going to be taken care of if you could adjust a couple of those things like uh, Councillor Webb had said that would be good. And then we can get these, these circulated so people are aware of how the process is gonna work and when it starts. So, For sure. okay, so it was moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Webb. Um, is there any more questions with regards to this? If not, all in favor? And that's carried. Thank you, Wendelin. Uh, Thank you. Your next report here is with regards to uh, um, the investment update on the ones that's a little more that's explained a little more that all that money wasn't all ours um, yeah. that it is for reserves and that's going to be a part of the budget process so how yeah. that how them reserves are allocated and where we stand on them all of that should come out in the budget as far as uh, the reserve schedules and uh, um, the numbers that go with all them reserves you listed on there so thank you for that yeah. um, is there any questions with regard to that report with council? Uh, Deputy Mayor Jero and then council, oh, okay. So Deputy Mayor Jero, Councilor Webb and then Councilor Pomeroy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Wendland, for this. Uh, the council actually asked for this and uh, as the mayor has stated, it is gonna come out in budget. I think it's very, very important that all those people in our municipality understand that we don't have that money. It's, it's not just laying in the bank account to do whatever we like with it. It's earmarked. And I don't know how to get that into the public view. If they don't come to the, if they don't come to a budget meeting, um, they're still gonna be under the same impression. So I guess what I'm asking council is your thoughts coming forward on how we can get this message that, uh, you know. So just to answer that now, because of the COVID, we're gonna be doing the Zoom meetings um, for budget. So a lot of, um, we do a PowerPoint closer to the end. So a lot of this can be viewed through the Zoom meeting, which may have a bigger audience than we've had in the past in-house. So that might be an avenue to get the message out. Thank you for that one. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you, Dave. Yeah, you're right. This is something that has to get out there. It did get out there last week, but unfortunately, it was people that didn't really understand the process. So, um, you know, they, they misread it and misheard it, I think. So I think it's just a lack of information, but we'll deal with that at budget time and get all the numbers in place so people can see where the money is allocated to and uh, uh, move on. So Councillor Webb, go ahead. I was just going to make a motion to receive the report, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Moved by Councillor Webb that we receive the report. Councillor Pomeroy, do you have a comment? <clears throat> no, you covered it there in your last little bit there, Jim. Okay. So you'll second that? Yep. Is there any other comments? Uh, Councillor Ellis, you're okay? Okay. All in favor of the uh, receiving this report? And that's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next report is uh, Bob with regards to uh, committee appointments. Go ahead, Bob. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, this report uh, provides information for council just updating the midterm committee appointment schedule. So it is now in process. Uh, there will be an advertisement in the Havelock Rail in the November edition. Uh, advertisements on our website. We have connected already with current sitting members of committees. Uh, we've received a few responses, uh, but it will be time uh, in December to confirm appointments going forward for the final two years of the council mandate. Okay, thank you. The only uh, committee that I was surprised we don't have, and I've always kind of wondered, is the uh, Heritage or uh, historical committee. We don't actually have an official committee. We have uh, a person that looks after a lot of that stuff, but that's something in the future that I think is going to have to be looked at because there is quite a slew of uh, um, historical things at the town hall, and it might be nice to have an official committee to try and, you know, get that stuff out there. Um, and make better use of it. It's just my thoughts, but I was I, a lot of municipalities have a historical society or a um, heritage uh, committee, and I just wondered we've never had one, and it might be something to look at in the future. Here, just my thoughts. But uh, um, other than that, uh, is there any questions, Barry? Go ahead. And then yeah, further, further to you, your comment there, Mr. Mayor, um, I think it would be very beneficial to have a committee you know we left it with diane mack for years and and uh she's pretty much alone uh there's not even a committee now for us to speak of so i think maybe we should deal with it you know this this year because every year we seem to make suggestions but we don't follow through with them so i would like to make a motion that we uh maybe advertise for a committee for the heritage. Yeah, I think for it to carry on, it would be nice to have a couple of people on that committee and possibly a council representative or even just have two or three public people on that. But I don't know, mm -hmm. we don't have the um, what it would look like, but we do need to get something going. So I don't know if you have any ideas there, Bob. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, if this is a, a new committee, that has not previously been in existence, uh, we would have to determine a terms of reference for the committee, determine how many committee members you would like to have on the board and the composition of the committee, including how many council members would wish to be involved. So we would have to put that structure in place and then we could certainly advertise uh, for committee members. Okay, so that might have to be a separate thing, I think, because uh the time that goes into that, I would imagine your advertisement for the rail has already gone out. Uh, yes, it has, Your Worship. Okay. Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Just a comment through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I totally agree with uh, the other comments from councillors. Uh, our heritage is a very important thing, and uh, unfortunately, at times it gets put on a back burner and not recognized. Uh, to add to your comments, also, I think it's time we looked at a proper location for um, the uh, very important items that are being stored uh, down in the old town hall spot. Not much of a 
not much of a heritage location. Uh, so I, I would like to have that added to um, council's discussion at some point, uh, the proper location for those uh, particular important items. Yeah, and I think that would go along with the committee, Larry, is if we get this committee going, that is something that needs to be done. You're right, we need to get that stuff out there. So I think that would be a tie into this committee as far as how we get everything out into the public and, and viewed. So yeah. it's my thoughts, but. Agreed, and but it's, uh, you know, it's council that needs to take the step forward to, to create or find the proper locations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dave, go ahead. Sure, Mr. Mayor, um, I think it's a great idea. And as Councillor Plumer has alluded to, we've seemed to get off track when we talk about this. So we're going to move forward at a courtesy and respect to Mrs. Mack. I think we better let her know that we're going to do this. Yeah, I, I think we need to actually consult with her and ask her when we're setting up what this thing would look like. We need to, you know, ask her what she thinks too and get her input. She's been doing it for a long time and uh, um, I'm sure she has some ideas too. So um, that might be the next step, Bob, is to let her know that we would like to see an official committee set up uh, as part of the township and, and have some, you know, more input into it. So. Um, so we will contact her and uh, and get this terms of reference going uh, as soon as possible. Go ahead, Bob. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Then, if we could, uh, if staff could request a, a resolution today, um, that council move forward with establishing a committee for the historical society, and and then we will consult. Okay, um, Councillor Webb, go ahead. Your pro, go go ahead. Heart, I, you're freezing up. Oh, I, just, I was just going to move I don't it. I don't know whether it's my computer or yours. Okay, moved by Councillor Webb, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Pomeroy with a comment, Barry, or is that good? No, uh, no I just like to move forward with this okay. because it's, it's, it's an old, old thing that's been pushed aside too many times. That's right. Thank you. Okay, all in favor of the motion. And that's carried, Bob. So. Our next is with regards to closed uh, session meeting summary. Uh, this is something Bob started at our last meeting just because of the way we're doing things nowadays. Uh, um, so I look for a motion to receive the summary. Unless there's moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Is there a question there, Barry? Well, yeah, on the, uh, I'm, I want to go back just a little wee bit here in the cemetery board. Awesome. Um, we had, uh, Shirley's not with us any longer. So is there, is that a, a government appointee or is that a count or council appointee? That'll come forward in the advertisement, I think. Sorry, Bob, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mayor Martin. Uh, those were all uh, township appointees on the cemetery board. Uh, the only provincial appointee is uh, police services board. Okay, thank you, Bob. So are, okay. are we are we going to okay carry on? Yeah, that'll come forward when after the advertisement goes out. There, so okay. So all in favor? Oh, Dave, go ahead. I didn't know you had called for the motion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all in favor of that. so yeah, we moved on to uh, closed session meetings. Uh, um, so all in favor of uh, receiving those uh, meeting minutes, Councillor Al yeah, everybody's in favor. <laughs> I'm regressing here. I'm regressing here. So anyways, um, so we're going to move into staff reports for follow-up action. And uh, Ryan, you have a report here. Uh, um, yeah, so this report uh, basically just outlines um, uh, staff's recommendation to uh, proceed with an upgrade of the surveillance uh, system at the Havelock Community Centre. Um, if Council chooses uh, to uh, proceed with this, uh, this would basically uh, double the amount of cameras that we have. Um, and uh, it's been about five years, I think, since the, the previous system was installed. Um, 
the quality is, has, has improved a lot over the years. So, um, it would be helpful for us to be able to, uh, to have that information or to have that video quality here at the arena. So it being that it's a, it's a busy spot and, uh, we have seen some, uh, increased vandalism over the years here. So, yeah, uh, this, uh, this purchase would just come from the, uh, parks and recreation, uh, operating budget as well. So. Okay. Um, yes, like you say, we've got a lot of things going on and, um, this seems to be the way we have to go nowadays. It's unfortunate, but cameras seem to be a big thing. Um, Dave, you had a comment, then uh, Councillor Webb. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Uh, through, through you to Ryan. Uh, these, these cameras are just for the arena. We have other cameras in the municipality. Are you upgrading those too, or is this just for the arena? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is just for the, uh, the Havelock Community Center. Yeah, so, but we do we do have other systems in other locations. So there, are you saying that they're going to have to be upgraded too? Sorry, I missed the last part of that. Eventually, then they will have to be upgraded too. Um, most of the other systems that we have, we only have a couple other. They're they're fairly new. Um, but as technology grows and as the as you know, I think it's on a case by case basis whether we need to upgrade or not. But uh, we did have a recent incident here, and um, I thought it would be helpful uh, if we did uh, look at doing this upgrade. Okay, through you, Mr. Mayor, I just have one more question. Since it, since we put in and installed the cameras, had they been any use in regards to a conviction? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I'm not... Uh, I don't have that information, but uh, it certainly has uh, proven to assist uh, the local authorities uh, from time to time. Uh, we've been uh, we've been able to provide them with some uh, footage uh, that we got here. So um, I don't have the information on any convictions or anything, but uh, certainly it has uh, seemed to be beneficial that uh, we have that to, to provide to them. Thank you. Hey, Hart, you had something? Hart? Did you have a comment? Yeah, well, actually, uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux hit on one of my questions in terms of the conviction rate, because I've had conversation with a couple of OPP officers that say that a lot of the time, even if we have video of the suspects, that unless it's you know, high quality video or you almost have them right, right on the face, that it's hard to get a conviction. So. Um, I appreciate uh, Deputy Mayor Jarrell for asking that question because um, while I'm for cameras, if we have cameras there that aren't going to lead to any convictions or anything, I don't know why we'd be putting more, more of them up. But that being said, um, Ryan, we have a lot of problems surrounding the maths and property. Has there been any thought in terms of maybe incorporating one or two of the cameras from the system, maybe up into remote locations up there where we could have an eye on what was going on? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through um, through look, investigating this new uh, upgraded system, we did look at uh, adding additional lighting to the uh, north part of the uh, property. Um, as of right now, it's pretty dark, and if we added a camera there, it re really wouldn't do anything. So this kind of um, is going to get done at the same time. Um, we haven't done like up into the Matheson property, but we don't have any cameras on the on the uh, on the north side of the building right now. Um, or over on the um, over on the north, or like the northeast corner. So uh, allowing uh, staff to install us, we would get better coverage over that way. And and uh, it, currently, right now, we just we don't have any uh, cameras over at, at that uh, property. So yeah, I can like I said, I can I can understand. There's um, given what's going on, especially the past summer um, with the vandalism in town. There's definitely a need for more cameras around. Um, I just like Deputy Mayor Giroux had a concern in terms of whether these cameras were actually bringing us results or not, but um, I'll just leave it at that. And that might be something to bring back to another meeting as far as the Matheson property. I've been thinking about that myself as far as whether we get a couple of wireless cameras to go up in there to uh, kind of help us keep an eye on things. But that's something we can talk about another day, put it on an agenda. But uh, um, I think something needs to be done back there too. Go ahead, Councillor Pomeroy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you to Ryan. Is there street lights as so or along the north side of the arena, like uh, around the track? 
through you, Mr. Mayor. No, there, there currently isn't right now. Um, we were looking just at extending uh, exterior lighting on the uh, on the arena uh, building itself, but no, there's not. Okay, because we do have extra extra lights down at the uh, shop, and maybe it might be beneficial to put a, a couple poles in with uh, with a couple of lights because we have we have lots of spare lights down at the shop, and you know, granted you. Uh, you need the uh, cameras, but we still have to have lots of light for the for the, for them to work properly. Okay, Ryan. Yeah, um, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's why I'd mentioned in the report. If council chooses to proceed with this upgrade, the additional lighting would be installed on at the arena site itself. And if council wishes to look into options in terms of street lighting, we can bring that information back at a later date. Okay, thank you. Larry, thank did you, you have something? Larry, no? Okay, scratching your nose, I got that, I guess. Um, anyway, is there any more comments with regard to this report and what's council thought? If not, uh, I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, it's uh, if it's gonna help us take care of our property, that uh, needs to be done. So, and like Barry said, with regards to the street lights, maybe you can incorporate something in there and. Um, I know if they're wired cameras, if they're bearing wire to a light, you might be able to bury wire for the camera too at the same time. So uh, go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I'll make a motion on, on uh, Ryan's request. Okay. Install the, the cameras. Okay, moved by Councillor Pomeroy. Seconded by Councillor Ellis. Any more comment? Larry, go ahead. I could be permitted through you, Mr. Mayor, just a quick one for Ryan. The um, your master plan, I was sitting here trying to remember some of the details. The uh, uh, little parking lot, I call it, behind the arena. Uh, is there anything in your master plan to, um, to address that or utilize that? Uh, three, Mr. Mayor. Uh, absolutely, there's uh, there's some uh, recommendations in the in the master plan on what we can do with that area, and how Great. we can better develop. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we have a mover and a seconder. Is there any more comments or questions? If not, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, Ryan. That's uh, you can move on with that. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, quotations for snow plowing, Peter Lawson, um, just a yearly thing. So I don't know if Peter. Yes, yes, okay. for you, Mayor Martin. Yes, yeah, this report is uh, uh, to seek council's approval for uh, uh, the winter uh, snow plowing contracts um, for this up, uh, upcoming winter maintenance season. Okay. Um, any questions or from council? Pretty straightforward. Uh, Motion to approve the recommendation, uh, Mr. Mayor. Okay, moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Deputy Mayor Duro. Did you have a comment, Dave, or Hart? Okay, seconded by Deputy Mayor Duro. All in favor of that? And that's carried. Thank you. Um, I think I got a bit of a delay here, so I keep going on to the next one and then. Okay, next we'll move into uh, Laura Stone's report with regards to a stop up and close. Thank Hello, you very Laura. much. Thank you. Um, this is for a uh, property with the roll number 1531 010 004 uh, the recommendation is that council does not agree to the request from Mr. Hassem Gayami to stop up, close, and convey the portion of an open road allowance that runs along his property. Um, however, should council agree to his request, there are seven, uh, six conditions to, um, to consider. So I'll just leave this open to council. I, it notes in my report that um, this could impede access to one of the properties uh, to the east of his. Um, as well, council uh, typically does not um, want to sell uh, unopened road allowances that go to water because we may uh, need them for access in the future. Okay. 
any questions? Thanks, Laura. That's uh, yeah, that seems to be the few of these coming forward in the last little while. Um, Councillor Pomeroy, go ahead. Yeah, I would like to uh, approve Laura's recommendation that council does not agree. Okay, moved by Councillor Pomeroy. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Deputy Mayor Duro. Um, any comments or questions? Larry, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. On, I'm looking at your map here, Laura. Um, I'm trying to figure out where where the road allowance is on your map. It doesn't really depict where, unless I'm not understanding. Um, just one moment here. So as you can see on the map, there's um, the property is highlighted in yellow and to the immediate right of that, there's a road allowance that runs from north to south east um, and that would be he wants to purchase the entire road allowance that runs alongside his property. Okay, I wish I was I thought that's probably what it was, but I was just uh, not quite sure. And um, as we had talked about um, adding uh, mapping and so on, um, that um, maybe a little bit more information, that would be a good example, maybe a little bit more information on the map itself, uh, highlighting the fact that that is the road line. Sure, so through you, Mr. Mayor, my technology skills are not fantastic, but I will work with the county to figure out how we can get that highlighted. <laughs> okay, thank you, Laura. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm glad I'm not the only one that can't figure these things out. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we did have a mover and a seconder that we uh, we don't proceed with the stop up and close. Um, I can't see all the screens right now. Uh, mm. There we go. Um, I didn't do that either, so thank you, Bianca. Um, is, is there another comment there, Hart? Well, no, I just I thought I saw Mr. Guillaume or whatever on the board here a couple of minutes ago. So I didn't know if he was trying to get in to make a call. Yeah, I did see him earlier. I see it now. Just dropped into the meeting. Yeah, no, I don't see him now, but he, I, I thought I saw him on here about 15 or 20 minutes ago. So I don't know if he. Bob, go ahead. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Yes, uh, the subject of the report, the gentleman was on the call. However, he has left us. We're not sure what happened, but he's okay. no longer available. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So we have a mover and a seconder that we uh, we don't proceed. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay. Thank you. Next, uh, economic development, Laura. Thank you very much. So this report outlines um, our last economic development committee meeting, who was in attendance, what we talked about. Um, the committee also agreed to the possibility of opening up the terms of reference to include two additional volunteer seats. Um, there's no cost to the municipality for this, and it would give us an opportunity to expand the local knowledge of the committee. Uh, so it is my recommendation that council direct staff to update the terms of reference for the Economic Development Committee to increase the number of volunteers from business community from the business community, from one village ward business owner and one township ward business owner to two of each. Yeah, um, it was discussed that it would have more input uh, and the two businesses that are involved right now thought it would help them out too. So um, this is Hart's committee. Uh, you got anything to add to it, Hart? No, I'm moving. Yeah, uh, yeah, in terms of the meeting, um, just for the rest of council. Uh, we met with um, Mr. Riel and Mr. McGowan once again. The presentation the committee got was very similar to the one they presented to all of council. We were hoping we might get a little bit more detail, but um, probably given the time frame of how close the two meetings were, um, both presentations were very similar. One thing uh, I thought staff a few of the guests we had, Rhonda Keenan was there from uh, PKD, um, posed some very good questions in terms of um, maybe getting a little bit more focus to this project in terms of what would be the first, second or third steps. Um, there was kind of a, 
a fruit basket there of different ideas. And um, I think the committee was looking for maybe more of a focused uh, approach or plan. So what we did was um, we had a good talk with them and uh, the plan is hopefully, hopefully before Christmas, Christmas um, they'll meet with the committee again, hopefully with a, a little more focused plan in terms of uh, maybe what steps one, two or three would be in terms of them moving forward with that. Okay. Laura, did I forget Thank anything? Thank you, Larry, go ahead. No, Larry, Larry go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, just a couple of questions. I I was hoping that uh, this past meeting that uh, uh, these two gentlemen attended would have had a little more detail, uh, <coughs> some discussion around their business plan. So I presume the next meeting, uh, these guys would come back uh, with details of a business plan and those kind of uh, important pieces of information for the municipality. Um, but uh, good to see, good to see that uh, meeting did take place. Um, got a question on your report, uh, uh, Laura, 3.3 .3 in your, um, the committee um, report. Could you tell me what 3.3 .3 means? I... Sure, so through you, Mr. Mayor, um, that comes from our economic tourism economic development and tourism strategy that was put out, I think in 2019 or 2018. Um, and section 3.3 .3 is just the strategic directions. So that's just kind of a touchstone for any projects or decisions that we make as a committee. And then that I make in my role as the economic development coordinator um, or officer that I keep in mind these directions as we move forward. <laughs> Very good, thank you. And uh, just another quick comment. Uh, good, good to see the um, the suggestion of expanding. Um, I know you and I have had some conversation about that, and there are some individuals in our municipality that uh, would be a good fit. So I'm um, glad to see that coming forward, uh, Laura. Thank you very much. And through you, uh, Mayor Martin, we are now starting to advertise for committees. So get the word out there to everybody. Yeah, the business community, that's what these two positions are as business owners. So um, hopefully they come out and apply for it. So, okay, so. Just one more, if I could, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, sorry. Uh, yeah. So the, uh, the new appointments are strictly business owners? So through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. Under the terms of reference, um, there is one member from the Chamber of Commerce two council members. Uh, staff members are not part of the committee. We just are there for a resource. And then right now it's two business owners, one from the township and one from uh, Havelock proper, the village board. The expansion is for more business owners. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dave, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you for your report, Laura, and I'd like to uh, approve the recommendation. Move the recommendation. Okay, we have a Deputy Mayor Drell moving it and Councillor Ellis seconding it. Um, any other questions or comments? All in favor? Oh, Bob. <laughs> I, oh, I don't know if I got to lay here or what, but <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Bob. <laughs> Sorry, I just I just wanted to uh, assure Council that the uh, the advertisements with respect to committee appointments uh, has been put out in a flexible manner that will allow for more members should they express interest in participating. Okay. And all right, that's good then. And uh, the one thing I did talk to Laura about last week was with regards to economic development was the Ontario East is this is next week. Wednesday and Thursday. I had full intentions of taking part in it, but uh, I have so many meetings next week that I, it would be a waste for me to uh, sign up for it because I'd be, I think I would, or it's this week actually, it's uh, um, Wednesday, Thursday this week and I have, I'm just booked right up. So, um, so I don't know whether, and Laura has some, she's moving actually this week. So I don't know if anybody else has signed up for it, but uh, um, I have been talking to Laura about trying to get the, the material, so um, I'll talk to her about that later, but it is a good conference and it's a shame to miss out on all the information that comes out of it. So um, anyways, 
Okay, so I'll deal with that actually probably this week as far as if there's any way of, of signing up still and, and receiving okay. material. So, okay, so with that, uh, I lost it again here. Is it frozen? Are you, am I still? Okay. No, Rock, you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to, all of a sudden everything goes. Okay. So all in favor of this uh, report? Deputy Mayor Jarrell and Councillor Ellis, or all of us, sorry. Go ahead. I'm losing it here, guys. You need to take five, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Maybe 10. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to uh, reboot this thing. I don't know. I thought it was just heart, but now mine's doing it, so. Okay, we got one more report here and then we'll take five. Um, <clears throat> one in regards to asset management. Um, Mayor Martin, Council, this is a further report um, coming forward with some highlights from the asset management plan that's in draft form at this point. So basically this will be used in conjunction with the budget process and it also has all the, the reserves and the reserves funds tied into um, the numbers. So is there any questions on some of the highlighted um, features of the draft plan? Any questions or comments from council? Larry, go ahead. Just a quick one uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on your highlights, Item number two, could you explain it, please? Um, so for each um, member of the population of Havelock, Belmont, Methune, the annual infrastructure deficit would amount to $136 per person. Okay. So you. if you looked at point number five, there is a funding gap of just over $615,000. So using that and um, with the population comes up with the deficit per person. Thank you. I just didn't understand. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Wendell. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Dave, go ahead. Thank you, Wendell. A lot of work went into this, and I don't pretend to, to understand it all. I wonder if we might have time during budget that we might touch on some highlights of this report. It's very, I, I spent a lot of time on the weekend with it, and it's some of it's pretty straightforward, and some of it I don't understand. So, yeah, do you think um, sometime the plan is to use it? in conjunction with the budget process this year. Thank you. So that we're planning ahead. There's some components that, like this is a living document, so it will change from time to time. For example, with the roads need study that's coming, those numbers aren't in here with the new study. So that will change things. So when we're looking at it, it's based on the previous roads need study. So we have to keep those types of things in mind when we're making decisions on what projects or what assets we're going to be looking at. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mary, go ahead. Yeah, Wendland, I'll throw you, Mr. Mayor, to Wendland. Um, I see you have the sewer and water recommendation that are 5% increase over 20 years. I thought our, our objective was to get more people on this so that yeah. we, uh, so that it would pay for itself. Yeah. You know, 5% increase over 20 years is quite... Uh... Yeah, so as I said, it's a living document. So we do have some units that will be coming on with housing and then potentially the long-term care property and some other um, housing that would connect to the system. So as it stands now, with the numbers that we have on the system, this is what it would be. But going forward, when new 
um, people add on to the system, that cost would be spread out and it could go down. Thank you. Yep. Okay, any other questions with regards to this? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it is a complex report and uh, it's something that we're gonna be working with over the next few years. So uh, thank you, Wendelin. Yeah, and some of the extra components are, for example, is customer service levels and um, um, different assets on what their um, lifespan is. So there's a bunch of new components in from the last asset management plan. So it's continually expanding with data. Okay, thank you. Well, there's no more questions. I'll look for a motion to uh, receive this report. Motion to receive. Okay, moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. So, this will be also posted on the website. Thank you. So we're just going to go into activity reports. Do you want to take five minutes and uh, we'll come back? What's your thoughts? Or do you want to carry on and get this done? What's your thoughts? Hart, go ahead. Shouldn't take too long here, but uh, go ahead, Hart. Oh, if you want to go, then let's, let's do it. Whatever, whatever yeah, everybody let's else wants. Let's get it done then. I think we can get through this, so. Um, Bob, go ahead. Through you, Mayor Martin, just a quick point of clarification. The, the last motion was to adopt the asset management plan as presented. Okay. okay. Did we get a mover on that, Bob? I can't. Yeah. We will use the Councillor Ellis. I, I said receive it. Correct. Yeah, okay. All right then, uh, that was, okay. So we're fine with that. All right, thank you. Okay, let's move into action reports here. Uh, um, or activity reports here. We have a few of them there. There was a library board meeting uh, Councilor Pomeroy, is there anything from that that you wanted to add? Yeah, the uh, library board, uh, we, we went downstairs and looked at uh, that part of the downstairs that, that Kathy had made uh, a recommendation that they could, could free up. And uh, they're very interested in, in taking that that part of the uh, of the building downstairs for their programs. So, anyway, I think you'll get, get some more information from the from the library board. I know uh, Wendland comes out to most of the meetings and and has all the uh, the financial and, and uh, you know we appreciate that. So uh, until the board makes another another suggestion or whatever and it comes to council then we'll we'll deal with it okay all right then uh, councillor webb you had school council meeting and economic development meeting we talked about economic development is there anything from the school meeting um not too much jim uh school seems to be going pretty well so far um obviously most Oh, all extracurricular activities um, are canceled. Um, but besides that, um, the one thing we do have going on is, is hopefully installed. I don't know if Pete is there to comment maybe on, uh, I think he said possibly early November, we have the crosswalk installed along George Street. Pete? Okay. Anyways, okay. that was the plan. I spoke with Pete last week uh, and he's spoken with the county. And uh, so the plan, oh, there he is there. Yes. Uh, sorry, I missed a bit of that uh, meeting there through you, Mayor Martin. What was the question again, please, Councillor Webb? No, oh, I just, I just, I was just telling them about the, uh, what you told me last week about the crosswalk possibly being installed the first week of November. And you spoke with yeah. the county. Yes, I, yes, exactly. Yeah, and that's all that's been in the works. Uh, they've been going through getting designs and everything like that. Um, yeah, so right now they're just waiting for Guild, the electrical contractor uh, for the hardware and lights and uh, 
and the locates have already been uh, and underway. So as soon as the uh, as soon as the lights and the hardware come in, they're going to be installing that. And the county is looking after the uh, the painting, the, the line painting on the on the county road. So yeah, it's uh, tentatively uh, looks like the first two weeks in November that'll be completed. Well, the project's been a long time coming, and uh, I know Pete, you're just new to the job, but you've uh, really done a, a heck of a job here in the last couple of weeks uh, getting on top of this. So I'd like to thank you for that. Well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we had uh, Deputy Mayor Drow. Did you have anything from the county to report? Uh, sure, you Mayor Martin. I, I guess one of the things that I could report from the county is the, uh, the county of Peterborough and the district two and three of the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs uh, signed an agreement that uh, uh, the county roadways, the crossings, and those portions of the, the I won't call them ditches, but uh, in between the property lines on the highways and any county roads, they come to an agreement. It was a, it was a, a great agreement as far as I was concerned because uh, of the language in it, because of the, because of the insurance involvement in it, and I think it's going to let other municipalities and other trail organizers move forward with uh, with a better insurance policy. So that's one of the things that uh, come out of last week's or our, our last meeting at the county. So other than that, uh, we did talk about the Burnt Dam Bridge and uh, that's moving forward. We don't have the final report on that yet, but. Uh, one of the things that both the mayor and I need to and will be uh, reminding Peterborough County, there was a talk about narrowing that bridge. And if we narrow it, then a groomer can't get across there. And that's, that brings a lot of tourism into our area. And so we will have to keep reminding the county that it's important to keep the same width that it is now. Other than that, unless you have something, I, that, that's about all. No, that pretty well covered. And we did discuss uh, the Tim Hortons intersection there, or the intersection at Concession and uh, Highway 7, and that's on the books now as far as the county. So um, I'm not sure where it'll go to next, but uh, um, at, it is on the books now to look into it, maybe a traffic study around there. So, um, so that's about it for the county anyways. Uh, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, if you're finished there, Mr. Mayor, there was one thing I did um, forget here. I was at a, an ARCA meeting last Thursday, and well, I guess on Zoom, <laughs> and road salt seems to be the, the big thing for this winter like in the risk management plan. And they've cut back dramatically. There'll be more information forthcoming than I imagine we'll get it at the office but it's just a warning the uh, you know a bag of salt is about all you're going to be able to put in uh, in the little boxes that we have outside and further to that i i can't i can't say because it hasn't been finalized yet but okay. that's 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 something we got to look forward to is road salt okay thank you um with my uh, Mine always has the same thing there, conference calls and whatever, and I had a ton of them last week. Um, like you say about Zoom, Barry, it's uh, the one day it was like three Zoom meetings and it was uh, it pretty well took the whole day and evening. So um, I did meet with Dave Smith last week on one Zoom call and uh, the consensus around with the health unit and things that are happening in our area. Um, one of the concerns North Kawartha had, and it'll affect us too, is hunting starts soon and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that affects uh, with with all the regulations that are around with the health unit. Uh, I didn't really think about it but we all know what what it brings to our area so it's important but it's going to be there's going to be some different looks around some of these camps I would imagine um, or there should be so um, I don't know how that's going to move forward but uh, the other thing I had with Dave is I'm on, I think it's the 21st of November, 
He's doing a course of food share thing for the winter here, uh, concerned about the food banks and that. So I am going to be um, setting up something over at Foodland and he's going to be in town that day. He's going to all the municipalities and doing something there. So um, I'll give you more details when it comes forward because uh, you're welcome to come out and help out that day. So um, the other one was with Miriam uh, with regards to uh, what's going on at the federal government. Most of us know, like I say, we've, we've already heard it by the time it comes to this meeting, but one of the things there, um, this rapid housing grant that's coming forward, it's gonna come out here in the next couple of weeks or by the end of the month. And uh, it's gonna be a shovel ready projects and it should fit right in hopefully with our Peterborough housing um, and the uh, quads that are missing there. Um, we are hoping that uh, they've got everything ready to hand in, so they do have it ready. So um, hopefully it fits in and maybe it can be picked up by that, that grant process to, to add those two quads to the property. Um, and that was about it with her. And then uh, with the county, yeah, the only other thing with the county is I'm on another committee for the organization service delivery review. And that's gonna be a real busy committee for the next year. Um, and it's gonna actually, Dave's gonna have some work on it too once the subcommittees are set up, um, going through everything at the county as far as how services are delivered. And there'll be a lot involvement with the townships too to see if there's anything we can share, whether Mary, are you going to run the meeting? Well, I, uh, if uh, always back. Okay. Uh, You're on mute, Jim. Okay, I guess this is technology at its finest. Have you got me now? Yeah. So anyways, that's all we have as far as the, it's going to be good for the municipalities. Hopefully this thing comes out. Um, there's six of us on this committee and it uh, hopefully with all the input through the municipalities and, and the people around the table, we can get some efficiencies uh, between the county and the townships and throughout the organization. That's all I have as far as activity reports uh, on my part. I don't know if you had anything, Larry, there was nothing on this agenda, but. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, just a short one here. Um, I was, I attended the cemetery board meeting uh, however, I haven't got the um, minutes from the meeting uh, yet from uh, the cemetery board, but uh, the long and the short of it is uh, things are still good there. They're preparing uh, as usual for, uh, for the winter. The budget uh, was passed by the cemetery board and Wendland has a copy of that now um, to share. So uh, no increase in the budget. So. That's a good thing so far. So that's all I have uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. All right, then, if, if there's nothing else to add here, uh, I'll look for a motion to receive the activity report. Moved by Deputy Mayor Jarrell and seconder Councillor Ellis. All in favor? And that's carried. Next. Uh, We'll move into your, your written or notice of motion. Is there any uh, oral notice of motion coming forward today? Seeing none, we'll move into new business. And uh, there's a couple of things on here that are listed. And one I'll start off with uh, the arena, open, arena opening. Uh, we've never, uh, um, we, this should come back every week until we decide, but uh, Talking to other municipalities this week, uh, we are the only one that hasn't opened. And I'm hearing from lots of people that if we don't make a decision soon, we're gonna miss the vote on, uh, on the rentals. There's a shortage of ice out there. And uh, if we don't get into this soon, we, we will miss those rentals. So um, I did have an email sent to me today, this morning from 
um, one of our constituents. And I don't know whether Bianca has that picture, but uh, um, I was going to email it to you and it was hard to get it out. <laughs> there you go. That came this morning, but uh, this is a group that does a three on three or I think it's three on three hard. I'm not sure. But uh, anyways, they're, they're looking for more ice and uh, um, we're doing what we were told with the health unit and there's a lot of things to work around it, but uh, I think we need to deal with it today, one way or the other, and uh, whether we open or not. But uh, Hart, go ahead. Thank you, Bianca. Yeah, well, well, let's just get down to it. I'll make a motion that we uh, open the rink for November 1st. Okay, I'll, uh, so move by Councillor Webb. Do I have a seconder for that? And I don't know if I can second it, Bob, but uh, that's where I'm at too. I think it's something that needs to be dealt with uh, now because um, we're missing an opportunity here. So I'm not seeing a seconder here, Hart. So, that's no problem. Yeah. So, all right, then. Uh, um, is there any other discussion on this? Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't want to, sound like I'm, I'm against this. I'm, I'm really not. It's uh, one of the things that, you know, COVID has, has changed all our lives. And it's not only the kids at the arena, it's the seniors, like, and other people that are, that are older than children, you know, for like, the, there's no, uh, no bingos at, at the arena. There's none at at the Legion, and the Legion, you know, is going downhill too. And the, the seniors building themselves, I, I would love to be able to say, yeah, go ahead and do it. But with everything that's coming out from, from the government, about the time we get our ice in, are we gonna be able to keep the arena open? You know, like the second wave. So are we going to be part of the problem or are we going to be part of the solution? That's all I'm asking. And by the way that the rest of council thinks, I guess they think that maybe we shouldn't and be part of the solution until we find out differently. Does that mean... Go ahead, Art. mean that everybody in Norwood, are they part of the problem, Barry? Because every other rink in Ontario is open except this municipality. So why? what makes Havelock so special? I know, like that's one of the things I found out this week. I, a just, lot want, I just want to know why we're going to be the only ones that don't open. And you have all the time to, to answer you want. I just want to hear an answer. What makes us so special that our rink has to close when everybody else is open? Nobody said it was something special, Hart. You know, we, we have to look down the road. The they aren't open. <laughs> So it has are, to be special. Are, they going to, are they going to be closed? Further to that, I'm not going to argue about that, it. That's not it's that's not like, your decision, Barry. You're not the health unit. Man, right? Art, if they want to close it, they'll close it. That's right. Art, just let, let Barry it's not our decision. Art. There's there's been Art. a decision made. It's not our decision okay. to close the rink, Barry. It's okay. the health unit. Okay, they Art. want to close the rink. Just, just let, let Barry go through this, Hart, and then uh, you can respond. Go ahead, Barry. Well, like I said, I don't want to be the the bad guy, but there is there is a chance that our arena could be shut down again. And you know, another couple of weeks, we should know because the numbers are so great, and we haven't got the ice in yet. I realize that, and we're not the only arena around that hasn't. But there's been a decision made here by council today, and if things turn around, open it, but don't open it just for the sake of opening it and costing a pile of money. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. There's been a decision made today. Okay, and Ryan, for your budget, I would like you to look at how much you've allotted to open that arena this year, because that would have been in last year's budget. So that should come out of our budget and go back into the general use because we've already budgeted to open the arena this year. Um, so I'm sure there's some savings by not opening it. I'm disappointed. I really think we've missed the boat here because right now we pretty well might as well not open because everybody last week uh, 
Warkworth decided to open their rink. They were going to only open one rink, but there's not enough ice out there for the people. Um, we've had lots of calls with regards to people wanting to rent our ice. And uh, right now they're going elsewhere. So I think uh, the decision's been made here, um, but we should look at our budget there, Ryan, and see what kind of money can come back into the general use here because we've already have that money in there. Go ahead, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know this is an emotional subject and I for one would like to say, open the arena. That being said, why wouldn't we open it? We're paying for it. Everybody's paying for it, right? But I was under the impression that this council made a decision that we wait till November the 1st. And this stuff about, oh, we're gonna miss the boat for two weeks or nine days or whatever it is till November the 1st, it don't cut it with me. I wanna be satisfied. The school has no extra, um, anything going on at the school after school is out, you're out. To open the arena because you want three to play hockey, well, that's, I don't agree with that either. But I don't care if they do go in and open it three on three. But for me, I said November the 1st, I'd make a decision and I'm not changing my mind till then. And the health unit says it's, well, I don't even care about that. Well, I care about the health unit, but it's this. Just because Norwood's open and Calford's open and all those, I've got, and I made a decision November the 1st and so did every other council member that I recall. And that's where I'm going to. Ask me on November the 1st and I'll tell you, and I'll probably say, yeah, but I got that time and that's what I'm gonna take. So we should schedule a special meeting for November 1st to be decided because uh, that's all I was bringing it up for at this one because if, and it might be too late anyway. Like I say, you can say that it's not just for the three on three. I know that's why last week Warkworth decided to open their rink because they heard we were getting calls from that area and they don't have the ice in Campbellford to, to supply everyone. So they decided to open a second rink right now. Uh, Duro's only got one rink open so far. Maybe they'll open their other rink and uh, to be able to fill the people from the city too, because it, it's all over the place. But we did make a decision, so we got to carry on here. Um, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, November the second is Monday. November the first is is a Sunday. So, okay. you know, we could we could bring it back. Like I'm not against bringing this back. Like that's that's okay. the, the intent. We all made a decision before, and then. We're trying to, to push it ahead, but anyway, carry on. Okay. All right then. Um, and the other thing I have, oh, do, do you have something there, Larry, with yeah, regards to that for me? Yeah, just one last comment for you, Mr. Mayor, uh, without prolonging this any further. We did make the decision, as Deputy Mayor Giroux said, uh, maybe by December, by November 1st, there'll be more clarification or more uh, demands due to COVID. Um, but uh, I agree, uh, there's nobody sitting at this council table that would not like to see the arena open, but it comes down to being safe and the logistics of whether you put the ice in and then be told you can't open after you've had it in for a couple of weeks by the health unit. So I think we're being smart. Uh, first to next month, reevaluate. That's That was our decision in the last council meeting. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, the next thing I had on here was Tuesday council meeting. Over the last year, we've been struggling. We've been trying to get the reports in earlier so we have more time with them. But what I'm finding is to be efficient at the meetings, I think it's time to look at when we do redo our uh, um, procedural bylaw um, to look back at Tuesday meetings again. It would allow us the opportunity to go in the office on Monday to see people because a lot of us are reading our agendas on the weekends and that's what a lot do. Um, and it might be time to look at going back to our Tuesday meeting so you have an opportunity to see staff and clarify things before the meeting. Um, so I just put that on there for, for people to think about when we, we will be dealing with the procedural bylaw um, in the near future. And that might be an option to help us be more prepared for our meetings and, and be more efficient at it. So that's all that's on there for and uh you know to give you an opportunity to think about that so um next on here we had uh bob has a list of uh, list of meetings here 
You there, Bob? Yep, there we go. Sorry about that. Yes, uh, through you, Mayor Martin, this is actually the uh, special council meeting uh, that was requested by council to be held with the Ontario Clean Water Agency and Sewer Technologies. That has been scheduled now and everyone has been confirmed to attend this coming Friday at 9.30 um, at the Havelock Community Centre upstairs in the Lions Hall. That will allow for physical distancing. Um, we've also been approached by the Chamber of Commerce to make a presentation to council. So that will take place following the meeting with the Ontario Clean Water Agency. Um, and just a reminder that all COVID protocols will be in place and such as physical distancing and mask wearing, et cetera. Okay, very good. Larry, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Bob. Um, the presentation that uh, Chamber of Commerce is uh, preparing to, to do, Will that be um, videoed and uh, be available for the general public? Because that was part of the reasoning to come to council, not only for council's information, but to have it shared through video. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, the, uh, the meeting uh, while in person will be video recorded. Um, however, the quality of the presentation, uh, it won't be the same as we saw this morning on Zoom, uh, so it will look different. It will be uh, further in the distance in the audience. So if we wish to accommodate that following the meeting, we could certainly uh, add that presentation to our website in a different format if required. Well, that would be appreciated, uh, uh, Bob, because again, that was part of the reasoning for the chamber coming to council. So. Uh, the good things that they've been doing this summer uh, is uh, advertised and communicated as much as possible. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any other uh, new business here that's not listed? Seeing none, um, I'll look for a motion to, uh, oh, Dave, go ahead. Sorry about that, uh, Mayor Martin. There was one question I had for council in regards to the 11th of November. Normally our municipality lays a wreath. Now in speaking with the Legion, I, uh, I lay a wreath have for years with another organization. So they're hoping that those that purchase a wreath will continue to do that even though there's not gonna be 11th a parade and they would go purchase a wreath when it becomes available. They can pick a time to go and pick that wreath up and go down and, and uh, lay the wreath at their, what are on their time frame. Doesn't have to be on the 11th, but uh, I just wondered what council's thoughts were on that. Yeah, and that's what I, I was hoping to see them this week, Dave, because uh, others are doing different things i was going to see if they had anything uh planned because uh i know daryl's doing something virtual or something so um, i'm going to see if they have any idea of a way of doing things but um but i don't have i don't mind taking the wreath and laying it there uh, for the legion but go ahead bob yes through you mayor martin um in past years of course when meeting in person uh, the township has always had a wreath in our council chamber uh, which I believe was then taken to the Cenotaph following uh, Remembrance Day ceremony. So we have requested a wreath for the office when they are available. It will be available out front uh, just for council's information. That's good. Thank you, Bob. So we'll look after that, Dave. Thanks. Um, so if there's nothing else under new business, I'll a motion to receive the uh, new business report. Moved by Deputy Mayor Duro and seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. Um, we don't have any bylaws today. Um, so I'll just be looking for a confirming bylaw for the proceedings of the meeting today. And we will have a closed session meeting at 1.30, I think it is, Bob, one or 1.30, I think we have to be over there. Is that right? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, 
we will be having our municipal solicitor will be joining us um, and he's able to arrive between 2 and 2.30. Oh, so what time do you want us over there for? We could commence at 2 and we could carry on with some other business uh, and while we wait for him to arrive. Okay. All right, then. So I'll look for the confirming bylaw for this meeting and uh, moved by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Deputy Mayor Durrell. All in favor? And that's carried. And a motion to adjourn, Councillor Pomeroy and Councillor, somebody else you want seconder there? Councillor Ellis, all in favor. All right, we'll see you in a little while. And thank you everyone for who attended. Thank you, staff.